In June last year, a computer virus called Stuxnet was discovered lurking in the data banks of power plants, traffic control systems and factories around the world. 20 times more complex than any previous virus code, it had an array of capabilities. Among them, the ability to turn up the pressure inside nuclear reactors or switch off oil pipelines, and Stuxnet could tell the system operators everything was normal. Unlike most viruses, Stuxnet doesn't carry the usual forged security clearance that helps viruses burrow into systems. It actually had a real clearance, stolen from one of the most reputable computer technology companies in the world. It exploited security gaps that system creators are unaware of. These holes are known as zero days, and the most successful viruses exploit them. The details of a zero day can be sold on the black market for $100,000. Stuxnet took advantage of 20 zero days. But once it got into a system, it didn't always activate. Buried deep in the Stuxnet code was a specific target. Without that target, the virus remained dormant. What was it looking to shut down? The centrifuges that spin nuclear material at Iran's enrichment facilities. Stuxnet was a weapon, the first to be made entirely out of code. The Washington-based Institute for Science and International Security says the virus may have shut down a thousand centrifuges at Natanz, Iran's main enrichment facility, last year. In November, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the UN's nuclear watchdog, said Iran had suspended work at its nuclear facilities without explaining why. Many observers credited Stuxnet. Last month, the Iranian government conceded the virus's infection of the Bashir nuclear facility, still under construction, meant that switching the plant on could lead to a national electricity blackout. Iran has responded to the attack with an open call for hackers to join the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and has reportedly amassed the second largest online army in the world. So who was behind Stuxnet? There's no evidence beyond rumour. Some have it that Israel is responsible because the virus code apparently contains references to the Hebrew Bible. Others believe the US was involved in the testing and development. The finger has even been pointed at Siemens mobile phone company, whose software is used by the Iranian regime. The most important question may not be who designed it, but who will redesign it. The evolution has been so fast that nine months after its detection, the first virus that could crash power grids or destroy oil pipelines is available online for anyone to download and tinker with. You can watch people on YouTube pulling Stuxnet apart. It's an open source weapon. And there's no way of knowing who will use it or what they will use it for.